yeah, thanks for coming out and staying out until the third talk. We have one more after me and then a little AV performance. I'm going to go quick. We'll see. Um, you can very faintly see what I've got going on. But yeah, I'm Lyle.Simulate on the social media. I've been pretty, pretty uh, deep in the tool building on touch for a while. Um, but I got some fun stuff to go over today. This is, let's see if it, did this work? Oh, that's, now, I guess I'll, should set my output to 4K. Any better? Nope. It was better without that. Let's see. So if I go videos, it's fine. But if I do a desktop, it's... An... All right. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've am i got a fun little thing to show off. This is a little sneak preview of something I'm going to hopefully release and let many, many people play with in the future. But um, you might see some orange operators behind me and some things that are like chat or hold chat. Um, so I've I've kind of built out a little operator family called, uh, I'm calling it tentatively LOPS right now, language operators. But these are LLM operators that I'm not trying, I'm trying to like uh, find a way to uh, go beyond the assistant model. Like LLMs are great. We got basically word calculators that can predict words and stuff, but um, there's things that you can do with it, either with structuring the response in like JSON mode or actually tool calling where um, you can use them to do functional specific engineerable tasks within a system and in this case within your touch designer network. So um, yeah, the like super simple version is kind of like this conversation operator I have. Hopefully these videos will like be quick enough, but you see I've got some parameters linking to like the user assistant chat coming in. This is basically like Super simple, maybe you use this to establish kind of like a tone, um, but that's not super procedural. This is something with a little stream diffusion. I'm basically taking the single prompt and using the LLM to expand it into something a lot more beautiful. This is an apple and you see it turn into a much better prompted apple here. Um, and then I think, let's see, I can probably skip through another part of the video. And then I'm scrolling through and I can, I kind of click and I'm getting different versions of Yosemite. It goes to like this party, but there's like an agent operator um, and an idea of a chat table. So the chat table is a standard table format that adds the messages and you can grow a conversation in that way. This is a fun little thing where, let's start at the beginning there. This is me building um, basically a feedback loop um, with an agent. And I have this operator for LOPS called feedback, which is, this is, this was kind of the onset of the idea where I was like, how do, how can I like procedurally iteratively make, build like an LLM workflow in touch. So you've got a roll column, a message column, timestamp and ID or ID and timestamp, which aren't used that much, but I'm imagining how they can be used in the future. And then you can use the feedback and basically send the conversation through a add message op, which you can, as a user, put a message in through the agent op to a null back to the feedback. Um, I've got like a hold chat, which tells the chat to hold um, after like X messages are hit or maybe a certain token count. Um, but yeah, this is basically me just running over a super simple feedback loop um, I'm, I've got callbacks for a bunch of these things as well. So I had to add some custom Python stuff where you are like turning the hold on, turning the hold off. So it's not like super simple to even just set up like what chat GPT does, but I'm trying to build like the, those like basic building blocks to make other things more powerful. Um, I was hoping to get my screen recording or just screen view of my laptop here, but this is another fun thing. Um, I have like a GLSL creator op which will create the GLSO code and then if it uh, causes an error it'll look at the error code and send that back to the model and iteratively like uh, run over it 
And then because that happens a lot, especially with GLSL, especially I don't know if any of you have tried to get chat GPT or any of these models to actually write GLSL code. There's like two things that Touch Designer has done within the GLSL that just confuses the heck out of the model, like TD Swizzle. I love it, but chat GPT doesn't. Um, but yeah, this is a little, this isn't really like part of the super procedural toolkit, but this GLSL op is pretty fun. What is this? Oh, so this is the setup. Uh, another thing that the agents, that's like the main logic operator, like operator that can actually do stuff. An agent is able to, you can drag. Seeing that, I don't know why the screen is not displaying. Oh, that's why. It's because I'm screen grabbing both my desktops. Just display one, now we're, now we're glorious. All right, cool. So I've got LOPS here. And as you can see, I've built a, a couple. Um, but it's a new operator family right next to DATS, or and that's how it is now. Um, the conversation op that I talked about. And then this agent op is fun. This is like the main guy that you would want to throw into a feedback loop. Um, I decided to make it a container and add a UI just for fun. Um, but the agent op is able to control parameters. So let me go back to the art playback setup. So this is a little mini version. Um, this is not what's running that like iterative playback before the talks, but I've basically given the agent op the ability to look at a custom operator that has a movie parameter, an artist parameter, a title, and a website. And then I'm basically in this text thing. Is here. Um, you see the first ad message is just saying Lake Heckman is the artist, or I guess in this first, I just probably just said Otis Gordon, but, um, still, it still does say Lake. Oh, that's because that's all the, the data. So I basically given unstructured text data to the LLM, and then that has all the file names and kind of a rough schedule, but it can just look at that and then arbitrarily choose to set the parameters. And it doesn't have to choose to set all the parameters. I could maybe just tell it, hey, just change the movie file for this person. Or if like the movie file is just wrong for that. But yeah, that's a little demo of it actually doing something a little more useful other than just like talking to it in your network. That's kind of the, I don't know, it's a tricky part about this is I'm trying to make them actually useful beyond replacing part of your process. I don't like the idea of like LLMs just like replacing the art make. But I really think there's like a lot of power for them to be able to be used to find ways for like other art. And like obviously touch designer, you can turn anything into a freaking custom parameter. So like yeah, just imagining like an installation where you can basically compress some sort of data into text and then maybe the part of the art making is kind of the random idea of like an AI making the art. I don't really, I don't love that being like the point of the art. Like a lot of AI art is like, oh, cool. I made an AI make this. And yeah, it's like, cool. I don't know. It's like a tech demo at that point. But I think that um, like the agent can also build tables and edit tables and edit text. Currently, there's also a lot more that I think that this toolkit will uh, build out to be. But yeah, this is a little a little sneak preview at some operators that I'm entering, I would say, a, a hopeful beta phase. So if anyone wants to play around with these, let me know. Happy to send them over. Um, and yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. I got a lot of lops, but that's a, just a general overview on what I've got. I will answer like a couple questions really quick because I don't want to go too far over. We got. That is a good idea for an operator. Um, hold chat is kind of like a hold chat execute almost, and you could set a token threshold or a, a message hold threshold. So you could do that within uh, feedback loop, but that 
is definitely a thing. <laughs> I indexed all of the local documentation. Like I've got like rag working, which retrieval augmented generation. I didn't talk about that, but is cool. But it basically takes arbitrary, like tons of arbitrary text and reduces it into embedded small chunks and then does like a closest, closest like semantic meaning search over that. So there's like, yeah, you can, it's a fun way to search over the um, local documentation for Touch Designer and get like some like code slightly more accurate to wh maybe what you're asking about. But yeah, I don't know. I, I have the caption up, so yeah, you can plug a top into that and get a description um, with any model that can is multimodal. Um, but yeah, no, that's, I also like the idea of like, like I haven't built out too many things. I don't have like the most impressive demos to even show you. I was glad I pulled out this art playback thing this afternoon. I was like, cool, that's something that's like they've already seen. It's like, oh, look, AI did that, but not really. Um, the idea of making like a poster design. And I think, I think Billiam even has like a good project. Maybe that's a good starting point, but like a ton of parameters on like orientation, layout, title, color. And then you could feed that to a model and almost prompt it. And like, it's not an image diffusion model, but you're like designing a little AI process that you can kind of tack a control LLM on top and see, make them go crazy. Got in the back. Ooh. Good question. Uh, so, yeah, the the top two things on the op menu actually open little just parameter dialogues. I made that choice, and um, but everything goes. If we go to the behind the scenes, everything runs through my chat TD op, and then my chat TD op has. If we hit this, maybe. It, you can see in the exposed functions, this custom API call. And that's actually a function with a callback and a callback op on top of it. So every single lop that calls an AI model calls that function in chat TD. And that's, yeah, it's callback op, callback functions. And then I've even got like um, chat, like you can talk with multiple agents and like the same little thing. That gets messy, but it's it works. Yeah, the, yeah. It's like, I, I meant to repeat these questions for the live stream, but I haven't. Maybe I'll get this last one. <laughs> it's basically similar to like an image feedback um, you're, I'm just capturing that data and pulling it back. And then any time that the table over at the null changes, I think I'm on the right side for you guys. Um, the feedback then pulls and grabs that change. And then there's a reset pulse, reset toggle. So you, if you hit that, well, I mean, if you hit the reset pulse, it'll just take the input, basically load that in. But yeah, it's a little bit tricky with dat cooking, but a lot of dat execute checks. Cool. Any more questions? Not really? Thank you. <laughs>